All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Convair Nexus Super Heavy Historical Launch Vehicle, which is being made by forum user, oh, oh boy, I'm going to mispronounce this one, Atik Talik Dreaming? Oh, that's probably not how you say that in the slightest, but yes, this uh, particular mod looks to add into the game a concept for a vehicle that was designed back in the 60s as a super heavy launch vehicle that was originally intended specifically for launching interplanetary missions. And, well, that just sounds awesome. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to look at this today. The other reason is because it was originally a uh, theoretical design put forward by Convair, which is nowadays General Dynamics. And my father actually used to work for General Dynamics. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, holy crap, let's take a look at what this is and, you know, see what all it has to offer. So let's jump right on into the VAB and take a look at the 29 parts, I believe, that make this up. And, oh boy, I'm not even going to bother grabbing a command pod for this because, well, quite frankly... Well, actually, no, no, we will grab one for size comparison, and we're going to need to put it all the way up at the top of the freaking VAB. There we go. Oh, boy. And then zoom out. Trust me on this, guys. We're going to need this. <laughs> And then what we're going to do is head into the various filters here. And thankfully, our wonderful user who made this mod has made a manufacturer tab in here with all of the different pieces we need. And it was, of course, Convair Division of Kerbal Dynamics. So that's uh, that's quite nice. I, I like the kerbalization of uh, General Dynamics there. And yes, we have all of these glorious parts that look oh so small and inconspicuous in here, but oh, you'll soon see that they are massive. We'll start from the top and work our way down, and the first piece we're going to have a gander at is a 10-meter landing strut. It's a landing strut that's 10 meters in size. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's just huge if we retract it. There we go. That is the landing strut for this baby. It is just... I, I don't even have sufficient words to describe how freaking massive this thing is, and I love it. And also, besides it just being huge and cool, it's actually quite a really nicely designed landing strut. You have all the cool details in the pneumatics there, the very cool plating on it, you even got the nice little landing feet, a very cool landing strut indeed, and of course, once again, freaking gigantic 10 meters 10 freaking meters and that's not it <laughs> or not all rather in the size category we then have a stack decoupler which specifically goes from 120 feet to 7.5 meters this is going to be one of the smaller pieces that we have on offer today that is a decoupler <laughs> just imagine the size of the fuel tanks down here that it will be decoupling from We'll get to those momentarily, but yes, uh, these decouplers, I'll admit, I'm not too keen on just because they're so bland. I mean, again, we don't really have a, a solid idea of what the Convair Nexus would have looked like, because again, it was a theoretically designed spacecraft. Uh, it was never built, which, oh man, I wish it would have now seeing this lovely design in here. But yes, so they don't really have a good sort of... Uh, picture or image or anything to go off of, just the design sketches, so I can understand why it's not exactly the most detailed decouplers ever, but still, it would have been nice for them to have added a bit more detail into these, and it's a similar problem we have with the others here as well, uh, and so let's look at the next one we have, which is a 130 foot to 120 foot retro adapter, which, uh, oh, there we go, now this one, this is cool. This is intended to be an adapter here, uh, but it does have these solid fuel boosters attached to it, of course, pointing upward to make sure it gets nicely launched down. And uh, yeah, holds quite a bit of fuel on that thing. A capacity up to 1,400 solid fuel. And of course, the thrust on those engines is pretty impressive at uh, f about 450 atmosphere, 500 vacuum. And yeah, it'll, it'll certainly 
separate your two sections quite nicely. Now the next part we have is yet another stack decoupler. This one goes from 5 meters to 3.75, so you know, getting nearer to our normal Kerbal Space Program size. Let's zoom in on that, baby. Uh, but yes, uh, similar to the larger one, it's just kind of a bland decoupler there. Again, would be nice to see a bit more to it, but still functional perfectly well. And the next one we have is the 7.5 to 5 meter. Right there, very good. Pretty simple once more. Uh, the next one we have is the 70 foot engine plate for dual engines. Now this, well, it's an engine plate to, to attach engines to. If we grab one of these things, you can see we have two attachment points at the bottom for engines that, again, we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a 70 foot engine plate there. <laughs> Again, just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, now we have another one, but this one's just for a single engine, so you have a single attachment point down here at the bottom, which of course you can see there. Beautiful. I like the uh, texturing and modeling on this one a bit better. I actually wish that they would have just inverted this to make these decouplers. I think that would have been cool, because then you'd have that nice sort of, uh, you know, texturing around the sides, the sort of grating almost to it. I think it would have been very cool to have those for the decouplers, but, uh, oh well, what are you gonna do? Now the next part we get into is the actual fuel tanks. The first one we have here is a 70-foot fuel tank for the second stage, which this one carries liquid hydrogen. And in fact, it carries 338,411 or no, oh no, wait, no, I read that wrong because I'm kind of sitting far away from the screen. Never mind, 3,384,000. Oh my god, I need to get my glasses checked. No, yes, it is the 338,411. Oh yeah, I need to make a call to the optometrist later. And yes, a gigantic freaking fuel tank. Very cool with the uh, sort of, I guess orb shape on the interior. The exterior texturing, not exactly the greatest, but not too bad either. It is perfectly acceptable and of course holds a crap load of fuel. Once again, so that I fix my earlier mistake, 338,411 liquid hydrogen. There we go. Next one we have is another 70 foot tank. This one holding, oh boy, let's actually read this one correctly now, 89,245. There we go, I had to lean into the screen a little bit. Oh yeah, I need new glasses. And once again, a nice little orbs inside of it, very cool. I like the uh, different patterning in here. Very nice. Again, out exterior texturing, not the greatest, but perfectly acceptable for now. Uh, the next one is another 70 foot fuel tank for liquid oxygen this time though. Carrying the same amount as this uh, large one here, so it is the 338,411. Now that that's committed to memory after my lovely little glasses flub there. And yes, again, just uh, the same sort of tank, just with a different material. There we go. And same one with this. It is just a uh, smaller version of the large one holding liquid oxygen, same size as the one holding the liquid hydrogen from before. And to reiterate that number, 89,245. And then we get to the really big tanks. This one is the 70 foot liquid fuel tank for the second stage interplanetary. And this one, I think this is why I thought it was million earlier because I remember looking at this tank earlier today. And uh, yeah, yeah, 2,003,787 liquid hydrogen. That's a really big tank. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Oh my god, I'm zoomed out as far as I can go in the VAB and just, just look at it. It's gigantic. It's beautiful and holds over 2 million liquid hydrogen. All right, we can take that one off. We then have a uh, similar tank here. Not quite as large though. This one holding liquid hydrogen as well. Uh, this one though, much smaller at only only 1,173,533 liquid hydrogen. There we go, huge freaking tank. Now the next thing we have is aero brakes for the Nexus size, and uh, yeah, they're just gigantic freaking aero brakes. Now, they're meant to attach to a specific location, so let's see if we can actually get, there we go, we can attach it there if we sort of flip it around. And it is just a nice big aero brake. I really do like the design of it. It's it's. You know, nice to see a little pop of color into things. You got the black and all that with the nice little grading texturing here and then the nice red exterior, or not exterior, but uh, outline there. Very cool, just a beautiful little pop of color and of course, aerobrake. All right, let's click off that one. And next, 
We have the APS-120 protective shell fairing for payload for the 120 foot. Yeah, this is gonna be a fairing, guys. <laughs> so you work it just like you do the normal fairing system in the game. There we go, and now we have a 120 foot in size fairing up at the top of your rocket. Dear sweet Jebediah, this, this, this whole thing is just gigantic. Somewhat too gigantic, personally, but yes, look at all those lovely attachment points you do get in this thing, though. So you can really build to your heart's content. Quite frankly, you could probably build a colony in this thing and launch it up. It'd be great. Uh, the next is a another protective shell, just a smaller one. This one, uh, 70 feet in size, I believe. But yes, let's just click a few times to finish that one. It'll be a 70 feet. And again, still huge, still wonderful, still a lot of great attachment points. Next, we get into engines, and the first is this atomic gas core rocket motor, 3,000k pound thrust variant, and we then have a 4,000k pound thrust variant and a 6,000k pound thrust variant. Essentially the same uh, sort of engine here. Let's uh, zoom in so you can get a good look at it. And boom, surprisingly small engine for the size of this thing. And I believe, yeah, they're all roughly the same size. I mean, it's, yes, all exactly the same size, just different pound thrust variants. Uh, but yes, very, very beautiful looking engine. I love the coloring on it. I love the modeling on this thing. It is just simply gorgeous. And they're all just different variations in thrust. The lowest one in thrust being 722 atmospheric and 1,668 vacuum and using a crap load of fuel per second. Uh, it uses liquid hydrogen at about 1500 per second, uranium te tetrafluoride at uh, 0.126 per second, tungsten at uh, 0.057 per second. Uh, does of course generate a crap load of power, uses some nice gimbling, it does have the tungsten and uh, uranium tetrafluoride built into the engine, as you can see down here, so you don't have to worry about it in other tanks. Now, the next one up just uses quite a bit more thrust at 963 atmosphere, 2,224 vacuum, using uh, a bit more fuel per second at 2,097 liquid hydrogen, 0.168 on the uranium tetrafluoride, and 0.076 on the tungsten. And finally, we have the highest power one at uh, 14. 1,845 atmospheric. Whoop, uh, clicked out of that again. There we go, 3,336 vacuum, and using quite a bit of fuel at 3,146 liquid hydrogen per second, 0.252 uranium tetrafluoride, and 0.113 on the tungsten. All of them uh, pretty much on par though for gimbling, electric charge, etc. Very cool engines, and again, just simply gorgeous. Look at this thing. All right, but next up, we have a 150-foot heat shield. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to have to zoom out again. <laughs> it's it's a heat shield. It's it's gigantic. <laughs> Not really much more to say about that. Um, technically, it is an unmanned command pod, which is intriguing. I, I don't know why it is, but it is. Uh, it does have a built-in engine here, which you can see is solid fuel. Uh, it does have its own reaction wheel, SAS, etc. And yeah, yeah, quite a quite a nice little heat shield. <laughs> but yes, with its own internal rockets, etc. Very cool indeed. Uh, next pit we have is the 120 foot liquid hydrogen segmented fuel tank, which carries. Oh boy, let me try and make sure I'm reading this right. Four million four hundred and thirty-eight thousand six hundred and sixty-eight fuel bam there it is gigantic and beautiful i just i love the look at it it's it's a very cool bulbous shape and carries just an absolute crap load of fuel but moving swiftly on because my god we're already 14 minutes into this video uh, 150 foot to decoupler there we go just another one of these and this one actually does have the cooler sort of texturing to the side so i'm really hoping that that's what these become eventually but for now, that is what we have there. We then have a 150 foot, 220 foot adapter. Hold on, there we go. Oh, look at that thing. That is, that is nice. Once again, has the nicer texturing to it. Very cool. We then have a 70 foot decoupler. There we go, excellent. Look at that thing, just gigantic. We then have 
what this gigantic rocket considers to be RCS thrust, the Nexus Control Rocket Thruster. Yes, this, this is what this mod considers RCS thrust. It's bigger than the capsule. <laughs> it's great. Now, you can see there it uh, has quite a good deal of thrust at 936 atmospheric, 1001 vacuum, and chews through a whopping 774 liquid hydrogen per second and 240 liquid oxygen. And yeah, it has a uh, RCS thrust power of 111. It's, uh, yeah, it's an engine that's also used for RCS. I love it. And it just looks gorgeous. Look at this thing, it's beautiful. Yeah, put a couple of those around, you'll have some minor mobility. All right, the next we have is the Nexus fuel tank. Now, oh boy, we're gonna have to zoom out. I love that this thing is reflective. All right, let's get right under this thing here. Oh boy, it's not wanting to cooperate because of the size. Okay, it'll work there. But yes, look at just this cool reflective property to this thing. And this, this is a fuel tank. This holds. Oh boy, 2,794,126 liquid hydrogen, as well as 867,501 liquid oxygen, and is just freaking massive. Now we then have a similar tank here that's a 50 foot variety, a little bit smaller, you know, a bit more compact. <laughs> And this one only has a piddling little 12,205 liquid fuel and 14,918 oxidizer. So quite interesting that it's not the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. It is just the standard liquid fuel and oxidizer. So perhaps a, a method of getting, of easing yourself into the Nexus ship overall. Now the next thing we have is a Nexus shell piece. And now you'll notice on these uh, Nexus fuel tanks, you have all these attachment points around the side. And that is where these uh, side pieces attach to, to cover it up. So let's uh, let's just try and get this thing. Oh, God, we're gonna have to do the same thing we had did with the air brake. Let's, uh, nope, nope. Try that, beautiful. And that would just be all around the side of that gigantic Nexus tank. Now the last piece we have here is the Nexus One Plug Aero Spike Engine. Now this is what's meant to go under this giant fuel tank and it's just one gigantic freaking engine. Look at this baby. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at all the engine nozzles, it's great. And this thing has, well, it produces a crap load of electrical charge at 12,500 per second. Its thrust that it produces is 12,608 atmospheric, 13,350 vacuum, and, you know, just consumes a, a mild amount of fuel at 7,114 liquid hydrogen per second and 2,209 liquid oxygen per second. It does gimbal and is just massive. I love this engine. So, yes. I, oh my god, these parts are all so huge that thank, thank the wonderful Jebediah that uh, the mod maker did actually give you two files here for the VAB. One is just the Nexus booster stage, which is the bottommost stage. And then this one is a Nexus with no payload in it. It does have a drone core up there. So let's load up this one. And this is basically a fully built Nexus here. It's gigantic. Oh boy. And if we scroll up. And keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling, there we go, we find the top of this baby. So let's go and launch it, and yeah, see the glory that is the Convair Nexus, and what could have been. Now the actual ship that they hoped to build with this, of course, once again, they never actually did build it, was hoping to be able to send up hundreds upon hundreds of tons in a single shot mission to another planet. That was its intent. <laughs> I, I uh, found conflicting numbers on it because I quickly looked it up and it had like, one page said 900 tons, the mod page says 450 tons. And also what's the interesting thing on this, this Kerbal version is a downsized version. He, he made it smaller so that it would fit within the Kerbal universe. I mean, look at this thing. It barely fits on the launch pad and I love it. So let's throttle ourselves up and turn off the UI and launch this puppy in three, two, one, blast off. And slowly but surely, it rises up into the heavens on a just gigantic engine. Oh my God, let's zoom in here. Just look at, look at that. That's great. 
<laughs> just love all those particle effects. If you have a crappy computer, I would not recommend downloading this purely because of all of the particle effects happening right here. That is dozens of engines in there, and that is just glorious. I absolutely love it. And yeah, the thing, the thing is just gigantic. It's excessively gigantic. But imagine using this to send up your missions to Duna or the moon or, well, quite frankly, anywhere in the solar system. Because that's, that was the real world intent, was for this thing to be an interplanetary launch platform. And that's just freaking awesome. So yes, if you would like to give this thing a shot for yourself, you can download it from the link in the description, and I definitely hope you do. Give it a try. I mean, I, I'm already thinking of all sorts of wonderful things I could use this for. Like, uh, imagine using this for your colony building, like using some of the different uh, modular habitat systems we've looked at on this series in the past. You could fit them in this thing easily. You saw how big that 150-foot nose cone was? You can fit a whole freaking colony in there. It's beautiful. But yes, do go check this out. And if you make any really awesome crafts with this thing, I would love to see it. Tweet me a pic, and I would just be so happy to see what you guys make with this thing. Because it's, it's just gorgeous. But yes, I hope you have enjoyed this video today. And of course... Oh, actually, no. I wanted to point out one last thing before we go. We are uh, basically halfway to space now. Main stage there. That's how much fuel we've used. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the map real quick. Actually, our apoapsis isn't very high, surprisingly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we could easily get this thing into orbit with plenty, plenty of fuel. And this is just the bottom stage. We still have this whole stage up here full of fuel. And this is with the smaller parts. There were larger parts available. But yes... Those are the possibilities with this glorious mod, so I do hope you check it out, and of course, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you come back for the next, but until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.